Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another chapter happy hour. I'm Will Clayton, and I'll be your host and moderator. And joining me for tonight's conversation is Erica Hill, the Corporate Partnerships and Product Development Coordinator for Pheasants Forever and Quilt Forever. Hi, Erica. Hey, Will. Your business card is just a regular note card then. Yeah, the text is, it's really small, as you can and, um, it's a long title. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't mean quite as much as I think. <laughs> Sounds good. There, um, so uh, the schedule had Chris Callis, our corporate part, or director of corporate partners, uh, joining us, but he had some stuff pop up. So uh, we wish him well. I think it's going to be Erica and I for the remainder of the evening. A um, bit of housekeeping before we dive into tonight's conversation. Um, for those listening at home, um, as always, use the Q&A function in the bottom. That's the best way to ask questions. Um, we'll try to get to most of them. Uh, but if we don't get to your question, uh, just copy it, resend it to your regional rep, and uh, we'll be sure to get any and all questions answered for you. It can be kind of crazy in the Q&A, um, and we got a lot to cover tonight. So also, new... Uh, for 2022, all of these are recorded. Well, that's been happening since the beginning, but all of these are recorded and they're posted on the Chapter Leaders YouTube page. That's PF and QF Chapter Leaders uh, YouTube page. So we launched this in late 2021 and we'll continue to add chapter-centric content there. So the entire catalog of Chapter Happy Hours are there. And if for any reason you need to jump off tonight, just search PFQF Chapter Leaders in YouTube, you'll find us there. Um, also a bit of an update, um, we're only gonna be having one of these a month moving forward. So you may have gotten the calendar from your regional rep back in the fall sometime. If there were two chapter happy hours scheduled, one of them will be pre-recorded and thrown up on YouTube. Um, I had a discussion with Aaron Keel, our uh, PFQF Seed Program Manager. That was pre-recorded and launched on YouTube. That's there for you guys to watch. Um, and the other one each month will be just like Eric and I. It'll be live. So that's the direction moving forward. That was a lot of housekeeping. Before we dive into tonight's topic, Erica, um, let's get a little background on you. Uh, you've worn a few hats with the organization. Uh, you have uh, one of the larger titles in the world now. We've already covered that. So for the chapter leaders at home and the folks that are going to be watching this recording, just walk us through your uh, your career path to get to the position that you are now. Yeah, thanks, Will. Uh, like Will said, I'm Erica Hill. Uh, shout out to all the South Dakota chapters. It sounds like we've got Aberdeen on. I know I saw a few others there uh, and the participants. So as Will mentioned, I have uh, worn a few hats within the organization. Uh, I actually came to the organization as a chapter volunteer uh, while I was in college. That's kind of how I learned who Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever were and what our mission was as far as habitat goes and met one of our farm bill biologists and kind of just had a passion for the organization ever since then. And so uh, moved to Southeast Iowa and volunteered there and was lucky enough to be, become a biologist with us. Um, I did that in Southeast Iowa for five years and then I made the big move to South Dakota uh, and became the rep there. And I was the rep there for three years and met uh, a lot of our, all of our chapter leaders there in South Dakota and uh, just really have a great appreciation for all that you guys do and the time that you give to the organization. And so after those three years, uh, there was an opportunity to meet for me to move into this capacity with the organization and handle, uh, you know, not only some of our corporate sponsors, corporate partnerships, but then it tying that into our merchandise program as well. And so that's what I do now. Um, and I've been doing that since this past spring. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for joining me. Um, but let's get to, let's get to tonight's topic. So got a couple of things. We'll start with PFAS. So Pheasant Fest, Quail Classic. Um, obviously we had to take a year off, but it's back and it's back. I'm excited to be back. Um, it's obviously our signature event, tons of exhibitors, chapter leaders, bird dogs, uh, and conservation-minded folks are going to converge on the CHI Health Center in yes. Omaha, um, March 11th through the 13th, which is kind of a month later than normal, so yep. want to get that out for folks. 
Um, so let's give everybody just sort of a high level overview of what's going to be going on that weekend. Yeah, so we're really excited to be back uh, after taking a year off and really excited to be back in Omaha. It's been quite quite some time since we've been in Omaha with Puzzles Fest, so uh, we're really excited to be back. Uh, we're going to have a lot of kind of the same, obviously, things that chapter leaders are used to at Pheasant Fest with a lot of our stages um, and areas on the show floor. Uh, we do have some newer uh, stages and places that you may have not seen if you haven't been to if you weren't maybe at 2020. Um, so, you know, we'll have a normal bird dog stage where they'll do bird dog demonstrations and training. We'll have the wild game cooking stage where a wild game, they'll prepare wild game and do cooking demonstrations. Uh, we'll have uh, the youth village and the pollinator plaza. Uh, the public lands pavilion area and the public land stage was has been a, a little bit newer of an addition. Um, and that'll be there in full force in Omaha, um, as well as our habitat stage, uh, which will be uh, becoming actually our habitat university, um, which will actually be become a larger um, had habitat education platform that we'll have within the organization. And so we'll be kind of launching and rebranding that for this Pheasant Fest in Omaha, as well as having our habitat help desk area for landowners to go and meet with our biologists. Um, another a little bit newer stage that we've added recently would be the path to the upland stage uh, where our education and outreach staff uh, work to, you know, engage new audiences, bring new women with, into the organization, talk about what's the best gear for new upland hunters and just kind of how do we infuse new people uh, into the organization and get them on their path to the uplands. So that's kind of the overview as far as the stages go. Um, a lot of kind of the same same main staples with wild game, bird dogs, habitat, um, but some new additions with Path, Path to the Uplands and the pub, Public Lands Pavilion. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. I mean, what, what Eric is talking about right now is the actual convention, right? I mean, we've got tons of things that are going on throughout that weekend, but, you know, uh, it's mostly chapter leaders listening at home. And But if you are just bringing your family down to Omaha, I mean, there's what, hundreds of exhibitors, right? Everything from, I mean, you're going to pet a ton of puppies, see lots of gear, you know, the salsa guy will be there, I'm sure. But also, you've got all these opportunities through these stages where we have scheduled speakers, and you just went through them all where, you know, if you want to get better, like myself at Wild Game Cooking or Cooking in general, you know, search those out. We put a lot of time into sourcing speakers, and everything is there. I mean, if, if you're interested in, like I mentioned, wild game cooking, but habitat, bird dogs, it's all there for you. And that's just during the event. I mean, that's just the show floor, as we like to say. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, can you, so you, you said there's a couple of new things. Can you just shine a little more light on that Habitat University? And I know like, I don't know that you're, um, intimately involved in the design of it, right? But what would the scope be there? Or what was the, the reasoning for the rebranding, if that makes sense? I think just to focus more on, so Habitat University will be an organizational initiative that'll launch uh, post Pheasant Fest, but they gotcha. won't rebrand the stage at Pheasant Fest um, just in relation because it's Habitat Education. And so Habitat University will come out later and it'll specifically be, you know, our seed team being the, being the driving force, but uh, other staff to support basically just educational topics about trying to educate the masses, you know, within our organization, within our chapters and beyond about the inner workings of Habitat. Love it. Yeah. So uh, for the chapter or the Habitat chairs listening at home or the folks on the chapters that are, you know, you do a lot of Habitat locally certainly stop by there if you're going to be in Omaha. But there's a lot more um, we, that we've got for our chapter leaders, right? I mean, it goes beyond the the show floor where you, you can spend hours, if not days. We've got, you know, events and, and specific items that are tailored for our chapters. Obviously, uh, talk a little bit about Friday night, what's special there, um, and maybe move into the weekend, the evening activities. Yeah, you bet. So, of course, we normally have our Friday and our Saturday events at Pheasant Fest. And so Friday night is kind of the more party atmosphere, uh, the Upland Rally. And so 
we'll have a band and we'll have beer. Uh, it'll be a really good time. And that's kind of more informal night. Uh, and then Saturday, of course, is kind of the larger auction. Uh, special on Friday, we will have the uh, VIP happy hour for chapter volunteers, um, which is something we did in 2020 and are going to continue uh, in Omaha. But it will be in a separate room. So we'll have a separate room dedicated to chapter volunteers to uh, come early, partake in some raffles games, drink some complimentary beer, um, and just kind of visit with one another. And uh, we're even lucky to be able to have some of our special guests for the weekends, weekend that are going to come in and join us for that uh, hour that is before the rest of the event opens on Friday. And so we'll have Sam Soholt uh, with Public Lands Tees. We'll have Ryan Callahan from Meat Eater. We'll have Shank, Hank Shaw, who is actually our keynote on Saturday. He'll be there, as well as the board, the Pheasants Forever and Quill Forever Board of Directors. We're all, we'll all be there for chapter leaders to interact with. Yeah, I, I love that um, that aspect of, it was a change really of the Friday night. So the, the you know, like Erica mentioned, we've got a now, this was launched in Minneapolis in 2020, um, but you know, in, in Omaha, we're bringing back the chapter VIP area. So we're, we're designing raffles, prizes, um, a special area. If you're a chapter volunteer, you know, we, we host this event in part because you, Deliver, like you are the backbone of the organization, right? So come and hang out with us. Uh, a little birdie tells me the dude that hosts the chapter happy hour might be on the mic there that night. So if you can tell me if I'm doing bad or good at this, I'm open to criticism or praise, whichever you want. Free beer, as I mentioned, raffles. And then we're just going to fill the room full of interesting people, which I, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to throw a party, um, the biggest party of Upland uh, conservation-minded folks in the country, free beer, uh, raffles and games that'll help my banquet succeed, those prizes, right? Um, and then just filling it full of interesting people, Sam Soholt for Public Land Tees, Hank Shaw is a wonderful uh, person to talk to, especially if, like you said, you're into uh, uh, wild game cooking. It's going to be a great time. So that's the one hour. You'll see the signage for it for those chapter volunteers that are coming Come join us, hang out, um, beers on us. And uh, I think then we're going to be moving out of that room and into a bigger space for the, the Friday night rally. Yeah, so, it'll, be, it'll be right next door. So we yeah, won't right next door. Perfect. And that'll be your more traditional. I mean, it's a party. It's different than Saturday, right? And that changed a couple of years ago. But, um, you know, like I said, band, that'll be your normal raffles. We'll be giving away tons of prizes and just having a great time celebrating all things pheasants forever, quail forever. Saturday night is your is your standard. Um, that's our national like our banquet, right? So uh, get your table set up for there, and and we'll be sure to have a great time there. So, um, talk about. So you work in the you know the corporate development space, correct? So obviously chapters are. Uh, at some different differing levels engage with our corporate partners. But, you know, when it comes to Pheasant Fest, what can they expect from, from our corporate partners? Or, you know, what plans do you have to kind of commingle uh, the, the backbone of this organization and the folks that are supporting the organization through a product sponsorship and things of that nature? Yeah, this is definitely something we've been trying to develop and work on and just provide more opportunities for chapters at Pheasant Fest and connecting, you know, how can chapters, you know, uh, visit their booths and benefit and also just kind of get to know our corporate sponsors and the folks involved with them and vice versa, because of course it's amazing for our corporate sponsors to interact with our chapter volunteers because you all are who we are. So they get to, they very quickly understand how passionate you are and uh, that we all are working very hard, hard toward our mission. So uh, one thing we are working on for this year is doing a giveaway for chapter volunteers that visit our corporate sponsor booths at Pheasant Fest. And so whenever a chapter volunteer goes to a corporate sponsor booth, there's going to be a QR code there that you're going to scan and get entered to win a prize package. So we're going to be working with every corporate sponsor to put together a prize package for each day. Um, then there'll be a drawing each day for chapter volunteers that visit those booths. That, so that's brand new this year, correct? Yeah. Yeah, new. I yeah. love that. It's, it's always unique, um, you know, how many times I meet someone that's involved with our corporate sponsorship. You know, any one of them at any level, a lot of them 
are well aware of the work that our chapters do, be it habitat work, acquisition work here in Minnesota and, and some of the surrounding states, but also what they're doing on the, you know, the path to the upland side. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard stories that, yeah, my kids went through this program at a local level. And I mean, these, these are corporate partners, but they're also, they're just like us, right? They care about the things we care about. And that's why they're partnering with the organization. So I see no, well, one, it's free, right? So you just go to all these booths, scan your QR code, maybe you win a prize, but two, it's always best um, to, to build relationships. You know, if you're a chapter volunteer, you've always seen our corporate sponsor banners. You may see things in the preferred vendor in the chapter resource portal, but you don't really know what that is or you're not comfortable. How do I use this at my banquet or how do I support, how do I support this uh, at another level or showcase it in my community? And that's what I, where I can see these relationships being built is it's a silly little QR code, but it's, that could mean a, a lot and it can really improve uh, exposure for the partner at the banquet and, and improve fundraising for chapters at a local level. So I, I love that. Yeah, we're but, really excited about it. Good. Yeah. A hundred percent. We're, we're coming to the end of the early bird pricing though. Right, so we, uh, regional rep should have sent the chapter registration out um, earlier, let's see here, probably early December, late November, let's just say. If yeah. you haven't gotten that or the email got lost, happens to me all the time, reach out to your regional rep. The early bird pricing ends on the 31st. Yep. Um, but then I don't know that we included this in there. There's a, there's a cool little item that's gonna come along with that. Is, am I mistaken? No, you're correct. So I will share my screen here. Look at that. Okay, are you seeing? Boom. Awesome. So along with our early bird uh, pricing, we were able to do some complimentary volunteer VIP hats for those chapter volunteers that register by January 31st. So. Uh, we definitely just wanted to give a token of appreciation to our chapter volunteers and are excited to have uh, their representation at Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic. And so the first 155 chapter volunteers that register by the 31st, which is Monday, uh, will get these hats. So um, make sure you get registered. I think about half the hats were spoken for already. So the hats still up for grabs. Love that. I um, and I mean, for those listening at home, hats are about as difficult as ammunition to come by uh, right now. So They're thanks to Erica right for now. the work you did. That's uh, it's not easy to come up with a large quantity of anything um, in the world we live in currently. So uh, yeah. look, we we this is this is feedback we got from chapter leaders, right? So when we sit down and plan out Pheasant Fest and and uh, you know think about how we can improve and ways to to um, you know, make it make it sweeten the pot a little bit for chapter leaders, to, or to at least make them uh, connect with other chapter leaders. Uh, a hat like this, and who knows what it'll turn into as uh, supply chains improve in the next year. But you know, it's a it's a token for hey, thanks for sh for signing up early. But also, as you're walking through the show floor, as you're hanging out on Friday night, if you've got this on you know, I think we all do better when we all do better when we're working together and feel free to, to hey, you must be a chapter volunteer. Where do you volunteer at? Where's your chapter? What do you care about? I mean, those are the kind of conversations that we're trying to facilitate with the chapter VIP area and through this little hat promotion. I mean, it's just that. I mean, we're, we're throwing this event for our, our uh, all of our supporters, none more important than our chapter volunteers. So I love this. I love that idea. Yeah, we wanted it to also just be a way to highlight, you know, to be able to identify a chapter volunteer at Pheasant Fest. So you right. go, you put your hat on, and now everybody there knows that you're a volunteer for us, which I think is pretty cool. Agreed. And it's another hat. I mean, who doesn't need another hat? I mean, right. this is... All right. Um, so I'm just going to run through this a little bit. So um, let's see here. We've talked about where it is uh, for those. So basically just go to the Pheasants Forever website. If you, if you haven't signed up yet or you're interested in it now or you, you know, you got some folks on your chapter that are curious about it, the chapter pricing is, needs, that comes from your regional representatives. You'll just need to log into your account through Event Center. That's how you get that. Um, the hotel information and the information on 
all of Pheasant Fest is um, Pheasants Forever or quailforever.org. And then there's a, a, PFAS, a PFAS or Pheasant Fest quail, for, quail Classic tab. Click that. That's got the hotel information. I think there's ho two hotels that we're partnering with. Um, and obviously the location, at, what did I call it? The CH. I Center, Health yeah. Center in Omaha. So uh, I'm sure the weather will be great, especially in March. I was in that area hunting birds a couple weeks ago, and it was much nicer than Minnesota. So um, show floor, show room hours. The thing kicks off with the bird dog parade, I imagine around 11 o'clock on Friday. Um, I did see, I don't know if you guys are on social media, but Bob did tweet out, you know, how to register for the bird dog parade. If you want to, if you want to do that, that's always one of the highlights um, of the whole event. So I'm sure that'll kick it off um, Friday, about 11 o'clock, 1130. Otherwise the show floor hours go from 12 uh, to seven on Friday, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. Those are show floor hours. And then Eric and I went through the Upland Rally, doors are going to open for the general public at five. Um, and then our um, our National Classic Banquet on Saturday, doors open at five already. So um, we've got a question down there. I appreciate you for doing that. But that, I mean, for a Pheasant Fest overview in 20 minutes, that's pretty good, wouldn't you say? I mean, we covered a lot, but you've got to go experience it for yourself. Sure. Do you want to keep sharing the hat? It's a nice hat, Erica. I don't know if you've got another slide or two, but... Um, yeah, when we switch to topics, I'll switch slides. So I appreciate them checking in on me because I'm very focused on Will's face. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, and my <laughs> beautiful denim shirt I decided to wear tonight. So I'm good to switch topics. I mean, we do have two topics built into um, tonight's conversation. And again, these things go about... Um, go about a, a half an hour, 45 minutes, especially depending on uh, how our, our questions come. So um, if any of you have questions about Pheasant Fest, Quail Classic, throw them in the Q&A. Um, it's more difficult to answer them in the chat. I did see some there, uh, but Eric, I don't know if you want to check in on the chat. There's a question yeah. about the hats there. And then we can move on to uh, just some more uh, upper level corporate partner discussion. So I do see a question in the chat. Uh, someone did register for their early bird tickets several weeks ago. They don't recall that they were asked if they were a chapter volunteer or officer. And so as long as you logged in chapter login information to see the chapter options, the chapter ticket options, and you use those chapter ticket options, we'll already know that you're a chapter volunteer. If you happened to accidentally not log in as a chapter and you just bought normal uh, Pheasant Fest tickets, uh, you can send me an email and I can help you you fix that, uh, ehill at pheasantsforever.org. So um, as long as you log in as a chapter and use those normal chapter tickets, we'll be able to get you taken care of as far as the hat goes. Yeah, that's how we distinguish uh, those sort of things. And Again, if you didn't catch Erica's email, you can always reach out to your uh, regional representative and they will just circle back up um, to Erica. We'll get all the questions and information out to you. So yeah. um, switching gears a little bit, you know, we, we started this with uh, your elongated title and I don't mean to belate that. I just think it's outrageous, <laughs> but it really uh, focuses in on our corporate partnership program. And, and these, thank you. I knew there was another slide. Yeah, it was coming. Um, I had to make you wait the, for it. <laughs> these brands continue to grow year after year and uh, all of them seem to be conservation minded, but all of them also, or at least for the most part, are, are either finding a way to help our local chapters, provide product for a local chapter, provide funding for a local chapter, so just uh, talk a little bit about our ever-growing uh, corporate partner program and, uh, and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, definitely. So this was something that uh, I learned a whole lot about as I moved into this position, but it's been really neat just to see the depth of, you know, folks that do support our organization, our chapters and our mission. And so uh, there are, you know, multiple levels of support that, uh, companies and sponsors can give us, of course, with the largest being national sponsors. And 
um, just like your fo- yourself, these folks are folks that are passionate about, you know, habitat outreach, getting new people into pheasant hunting. Um, they're passionate about our organization. So it's been really fun to be able to start to meet some of these folks and interface with them. And so I kind of wanted to just start by giving kind of a, an overview of who, you know, who are these folks and just making sure uh, we all know who they all are, because we've had a lot of new additions, you know, Thoroughgood Boots and BASF and, um, you know, Shields is obviously a newer one as well. We've had a lot of new new additions in the last couple of years. So just wanted to throw a slide up, kind of summarizing that. And so, of course, the top level uh, would be our national sponsors. And those are folks that support us at a level of $60,000 or more. So it's a pretty large commitment to the organization. Um, and we have, you know, a good number of them that support us at that level. And so the next kind of level down would be our licensing partners that you see on the top. And so those are folks that support us at a level of $25,000 or more. And um, these are folks that can use our logos um, on their merchandise and on their apparel um, and can also sell that, you know, at, in, in, at retail or in their own store. So folks that really have bought into the brand, you know, not necessarily at the national sponsor level, but uh, enough to be able to put it on their own products and sell it. Um, and then the next one, preferred vendors is, of course, something that has always related directly to chapters. You'll, you've seen it in the preferred vendor book that we've had previously, and now it lives inside of the banquet book. And so these are companies that, you know, buy in to become a preferred vendor with the organization and uh, want to support us by giving product, uh, allowing special discounted uh, product for chapters. Um, and of course, a lot of our firearms folks live in that category as well. And then finally, uh, we have just some additional merchandise partners and printing partners that you all are used to working with that we've uh, worked with for quite some time. Um, and so that's kind of a summary of all of the different sponsors. Um, of course, you know, these sponsors, in addition to our chapters, are super important to us as an organization just to ensure that we can function, that we can have an organization, that uh, we can have, you know, the various staff that we have and the programs that we have, that we can have a journal. Um, it, you know, they, they really go to support a lot of different things within the organization and they've continued to diversify and now you know, support uh, some of our field staff and are providing direct money into different programs. And so, um, you know, providing dis- discounted merchandise to chapters, as well as, you know, with all of these relationships, we're trying to kind of make it fit in all the right areas within the organization and provide um, their products to chapters, you know, where it makes sense. And so, you know, an example is the Thoroughgood playing cards that we put in the bonus package this year. You know, we heard from the field that obviously playing cards are something that you use at a banquet. Um, we were able to ask Thoroughgood, hey, would you be able to put together some decks of playing guard cards for our chapters for the bonus package? And so we're continuing to try to uh, utilize those relationships for the benefit of chapter volunteers where it makes sense. Um, and with that, like, we'd love any ideas that are out there that chapters have. Like if there is a particular sponsor um, that you have an idea for, something that you can use at the local level, any, any ideas, we'd love if you'd send those to your regional representative to share with us. Cause that's how we ultimately build these things, how it's best for all is just getting feedback from the field as well. 100%. I think you touched on a lot of things there. Um, and it's good to see all these brands and logos. I, I had forgotten a handful of them, but I think about, I mean, if you could go, can you jump back a slide? Maybe two. I mean, this is, these are brands, this adds legitimacy to an organization, in my opinion. You know, these are big companies that want to partner and support the work that we're doing. And um, there, there's, like you mentioned, I mean, it's providing products, providing lift to the organization. Uh, I, I believe Thoroughgood gave their entire team a membership to the organization. They which did, is yeah. Incredible that a company is bought in that much that they're going to like just give membership of this organization to their employee. I, I think it's just tremendous. So 
this isn't this isn't anything other than giving more lift to the organization, but also giving more lift to chapters. You know, BASF, I believe, I'm pulling that out. Uh, a lot of chapters here in Minnesota, and I'm sure across the country, have participated in the, the our pollinator program, right? And that pollinator grant, we've got a, a set of corporate partners that's been funding that program, along with those NCLI dollars that chapters have been providing for since 2015. You know, specifically for NCLI, but the corporate partners have bought into the work that chapters are doing, and you're seeing those dollars that chapters are raising through NCLI. Uh, matching with those corporate partnership dollars. And now chapters are delivering mission because of that. If we're able to do more because the organization is growing, um, you know, not only through our chapter network, but through our corporate partnership uh, program and, and, it, and our national sponsorship program, it's, it's just tremendous. And it's just something we don't, we don't talk about a lot. And so it's, it's great that you were able to jump on what, um, what's the, you know, you, you touched on a lot of things, but if I'm a chapter leader and I'm listening, um, you know, how do I interact with these folks? What's the best thing we can do? You know, I, when I'm talking with the, the chapters that I serve, um, you know, I'm, I'm always encouraging them to, you know, get the brands in the banquet, right? Specifically the Pheasants Forever, the Quail Forever brand, but also our partners as well. You know, it's, um, it's, it's important to look like a Pheasants Forever banquet and our Pheasants Forever, Pheasants Forever or Quail Forever banquet includes these partners. So what's the best way to, to go about doing that? Well, first come to Pheasant Fest and talk to them there. Uh, but also just, you know, supporting our merchandise program that we put together and the preferred vendors that are within that program. So, uh, you know, working with your regional rep on, you know, what are the new items for, this year and um, how can you utilize those preferred vendor items, those merchandise items at your local event? Um, what's the best way to make your money? A lot of the times you guys already know yeah. that you need any help with that, <laughs> um, but uh, we can sure provide more information on any of the, the preferred vendor products, but just, yeah, supporting those and lifting those up at the local level um, and all that they do for the organization. And just, you know, these are, sponsors and groups that care about all the same things that we do and you know that's why that's exactly the why they're supporting us in our chapters so just lifting them up at your local event inserting them into your games and your raffles and your and your live auction 100 percent. and you touched on it already but um as we're winding down here um start thinking about your questions if you've got them throw them in the q a but i do want to reiterate you know um these yeah, Erica does a great job. I know that for a fact. Uh, but a lot of these relationships and these partnerships came because someone spoke up and elevated it to your regional rep who elevated it to someone like Erica and, and off it went. And now they're providing lift to the entire organization. So um, if, you're, if you're a bird hunter uh, and you've got a product that you use consistently and the brand is growing and you think, hey, this might be a good fit for Quail Forever, Pheasants Forever, um, let us know about it. Uh, you know, if, if you're um, in the agriculture conservation space, there's a brand that you keep seeing or a, some, something that you're using day in and day out that, um, you know, you think that might be a nice fit for the organization. You know, they may, we may be able to help each other. Send that to your regional representative and, and don't be afraid. I mean, not everything is going to work, you know, um, but that it's so important that, I mean, we're, we're all in this together. Volunteers, uh, reps of the entire field staff. We're trying to, you know, uh, always elevate this organization because it's something that I love. And I know a lot of the chapter leaders, likely all of them listening at home, love it too. And the work that we do. So certainly don't be afraid to, um, to elevate those partnerships and those brands. And, and uh, if you, even if you can facilitate a conversation, I'm sure we'd love to hear it. So. Yeah. And your ideas for sure too. I think a lot of our best ideas come from the field. So yeah, those, connections you have, those ideas you have, we want to hear them for sure. Gotcha. Um, it's been 34 minutes. I'm cool. <laughs> We've covered a lot. I don't know if we're talking too fast or what happened, but we're not getting any complaints. So uh, now is a good time uh, to ask your questions if you've got them. But again, um, we want to thank Erica for her time here. Uh, Pheasant Fest is coming. We went through the dates, but you can certainly check them all online. Um, the preferred vendor, corporate partner information, 
all our national sponsors are on the website, preferred vendors in the chapter resource portal or the uh, books that we all got. Um, so um, I'm not seeing any questions. Come on, folks. Well, it looks like uh, I see one from Cassandra. Yeah. Do you oh, I see. Yeah. recommend that the leaders of a new, brand new chapter volunteer at Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic? We definitely would recommend that you come and enjoy yourself. Boom. Um, and just soak it all in. I mean, there couldn't be a better event for a new chapter volunteer to be at just to, I mean, get to meet a lot of the people within the organization, but just learn about every facet of who we are and make connections and just chat with other volunteers about uh, what they're up to and what they do at their local event. It can be, especially that happy hour, that VIP hour could be an incredible resource for you um, to meet with other chapter volunteers. So. I hope to see you there, Cassandra, because it'll yeah. be a really worthwhile time for you. Me too. I appreciate you. My chat was over the top of the Q&A because I don't know who hired the guy to run this thing, but <laughs> he's not very bright. Um, I, you had nailed it. There, there is no better place than Omaha, March 11th through the 13th, if you're a brand new chapter volunteer to be. Um, it, simply, you're going to get, you're going to meet folks that have been chapter volunteers uh, longer than I've likely been alive, honestly. And uh, and there's so much knowledge that comes from that and that comes from networking and having a beer with folks that are, are young and old, that that's the best spot to be. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, we've got a suggestion for you, theater tickets with the PF logo. I'll let you add that to your list. So I appreciate that. That's from Mike. Mike, that's from Mike from Sioux Falls. Um, theater tickets with colors with pf logo um i'm wondering if i'm guessing you're wondering if we have them uh we have theater tickets on print on demand mm -hmm. i believe the ones that we currently have the have the logo on them because we had some that we needed to sell through that we had previously had um the plan is to add the logo uh once we sell through those so oh we that's logical look at that that's probably another idea that came from the field it may <laughs> come from mike shots himself so Right. I love it. Yeah. I mean, we're, we don't always have a live Q&A, but you can always you can always email us. So um, I'll give you guys another minute or two, but we went about 40 minutes and that's pretty good uh, for 2022. You know, it's, uh, it's cold here in Minnesota. So the sooner I can get into in front of the fireplace, the better. That's all we got. Erica, thanks for joining me. Thank Some you, great Will. information. Um, it was fun. Yes, it was. Uh, for those listening at home, I appreciate you all as well for joining us. Um, February 15th, I'll be back. Only one in February, so we're not going to do a pre-recorded. I'll be back with Marissa Jensen and Renee Tamala. We're going to be talking about women on the wing. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody. See ya.